Hello and welcome everybody to the webinar on digital marketing. The webinar is organized as a part of Microfinance Center activities under SIFTA project. My name is Pavel Kapsdorfer, MFC Network and Partnership Manager, and I will moderate today's webinar. We will try to demystify the world of digital transformation and its critical role in shaping the future of businesses, fostering a culture of innovation along with adopting best e-commerce practices is key to success today. We will dive into current digital marketing landscape, share the trends that impact your business driven by societal changes and new technologies. We will also touch disruptive innovations like hyper-personalization, robotic process automation, e-marketing, generative AI, and evolving payment methods. We will also discuss the specific impact of digital transformation on marketing, finance, and customer service. We will explore the evolving skill set requirements, changing customer expectations, and the expanding competitive landscape. We will peek into future exploring technologies like Web3, emerging communication channels such as VR, AR, and the transformative potential of blockchain, and understand the opportunities and challenges these technologies present. Let me talk about our plan for today and our housing rules. Our webinar is planned for 90 minutes. That will include presentation from our expert speaker, few polls, and we have also space for questions and answers. The webinar is going to be recorded. We invite you to keep your cameras on, but please keep your microphones muted. My colleague, Joanna Zhukowska, will be assisting you through the chat with any technical issues and make sure our session will go smooth. In case you would like to post the questions or comments, please do it via chat or raise your hand through the dashboard under the button reactions. And I will invite you to unmute and speak. At the end of webinar, when you leave the webinar, we would very much appreciate if you stay engaged for additional one to two minutes max to fill up in our survey to evaluate the webinar. It is very important for us to receive your feedback. The survey will open up on your screen when you leave the webinar. I have a pleasure to introduce our expert speaker for today, Bernard Goko. Bernard is an expert in the areas of digital transformation, e-marketing and optimization of online sales processes. He mentors startups, advice to the medical, e-commerce and financial industries. He has been involved in the field of digital transformation and digital strategies already for 20 years. Currently, he is managing partner and strategy labs. He participated as speakers and panelists at many Polish and international events on e-commerce, modern marketing and innovation. I will leave up to Bernard if he would like to add anything else he consider interesting and important considering today's webinar. Uh, guys, um, uh, first of all, thank you for having me uh, uh, and, uh, once again uh, uh, with uh, MFC. I'm happy to be connected to um, uh, your organization and to still be, have possibility uh, to share more, but also learn from you guys, because it's always about not only sharing, but also learning. Um, I'm coming to you today as a practitioner. Uh, I spent 15 years working for major financial organizations like uh, HSBC, like um, Citibank, City International or Credit Agricole. But I've been also working uh, uh, with um, uh, startups, uh, with financial fund. Nowadays, I'm a general manager in Solution One uh, Private Equity Investment Fund. This is a um, Dutch Polish um, uh, financial entity where I'm solely responsible for the transformation of the uh, of our business of the investment fund 
um, uh, from the perspective of digital, from the uh, I'm responsible for the area uh, of uh, startups uh, supervision, um, venture building, but also for the general operations of the uh, investment fund. So basically uh, what I'm doing nowadays, I'm mostly focused on helping fostering um, the uh, startups uh, in general C area, but also uh, to some degree in US. I'm also I'm part of the uh, professor uh, body. I'm a, a lecturer on Polish Japanese uh, University of um, Technology here in Warsaw. So hopefully, uh, whenever there are questions, not only about the business, but also about the technical aspects of the solutions or of the processes uh, that I'm going to showcase today, please feel free uh, to ask the questions either during the uh, Q&A session or later on, reach out, guys. Let's stay in touch. You can always reach out via LinkedIn, for example. Um, get connected. If you have any questions, if, if I could help later on, I'm always willing to do so. Thank but you. Thank to, towards the organizers, orga uh, to, towards the Pavel, towards um, the uh, whole uh, MFC uh, body. Thank you for having me with you guys. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, thank you very much for additional information. Uh, and uh, let me continue with my introductory uh, slides uh, before I give the floor to you to kick off with your presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So le let me let me also introduce upcoming events, which we plan uh, on 12th October, we have a continuation of our webinar on ESG and those who are interested in really practical uh, aspects like calculations, uh, you know, and uh, consideration of impact indicator, how do they translate uh, into the results uh, and interpretation? Uh, please uh, yeah, feel free to, to join us on this webinar. And we just opened uh, the registration for third edition of fully virtual uh, online event social finance wipe, which is going to be organized on 21st and 22nd uh, November. And uh, you will yeah, you, are, you feel welcome to, to, to go to the website, to see the agenda. Uh, the, we will have really a number of renowned speakers from uh, different uh, organizations, institutions, authorities, uh, but also practitioners from the sector. So feel free to, to go to the website and explore for yourself, and hopefully we will see you there. For those uh, who don't know yet, uh, uh, as this webinar is organized under SIFTA projects, uh, SIFTA brings continuity to easy technical assistance program, which is known uh, from the past. And the European Investment Bank under the InvestEU advisory hub reinforces the European microfinance and social enterprise finance sectors and provides support to microfinance and social enterprise finance providers and the window social investments and skills. And the support uh, is given uh, through tailored trainings, workshops, webinars, peer-to-peer uh, -peer exchanges, study visits on wide range of topics related to financing micro and social enterprises. And the project also delivers rating, assessment, and evaluation services provided by MFR Microfinanza Rating. The geographical eligibility of SIFTA is for the countries uh, of European Union, and the time frame of initiative is initially until December 2024. The benefic beneficiaries, as I already mentioned, microfinance providers and social enterprise finance providers. The technical assistance team responsible for the market development activities uh, and capacity building services consists of consortium, which is led by Frankfurt School of Finance and Management uh, and its partners, Microfinance Center and the European uh, Microfinance Network. And for rating assessment and evaluation services, it is Microfinanza Rating. In case you would be interested to engage, to apply for the support from SIFTA, please feel free to follow up the link, uh, which you basically 
have available in the presentation you are going to receive after this webinar. And also, uh, yeah, if you want to apply uh, for specific uh, service, specific uh, uh, assistance, you can apply through the email mentioned on the screen. And now I would give a floor to Bernard to start his presentation, to share his screen and share your experience. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Just a sec. Sharing. Could you kindly confirm if you see my screen? Yes. So, Indeed, uh, we see okay, the initial slide that was welcome. Wonderful, guys. So once again, thank you, thank you for being here with us um, today. Um, during the last three years, um, I've been working with uh, microfinance institutions, um, uh, helping to understand not only the uh, technology uh, changes or business changes, but also uh, social changes and the impact of the general uh, transformation that we observe in the both Western and Eastern civilization. And I believe that Poland is a good uh, point to start um, uh, this, to, to get the uh, knowledge from, because basically we are in the middle uh, between those worlds, always in a struggle uh, to uh, understand and to join uh, best uh, what we can take from uh, uh, different parts, parts of the world since, since we are more or less in the middle. Guys, I'm coming to you once again as a practitioner uh, with a, over 20 years of experience, mostly in fintech or in financial world, but also uh, what I'm bringing, uh, what I'm bringing uh, to the table is the uh, e-commerce uh, uh, experience. Because if you take under consideration how the uh, digital transformation is being done, spread or delivered, not only in big organizations, but especially in the smaller ones, because it's, uh, it gives possibility to compete with the bigger uh, stars on the market, with the corporate world, um, uh, you will uh, see that um, uh, uh, the ground rule, the cornerstone of digital transformation is being opened for getting the knowledge uh, from uh, different, uh, from other markets, basic, basically. If you are thinking about providing to your customers um, new ways of uh, service uh, via online channels, you shouldn't look at the banks. You should look uh, at uh, what Amazon is doing, what eBay is doing, and other uh, uh, best uh, uh, best uh, like online shops with the top-notch uh, user uh, interfaces and user uh, experience. So I'm just requesting one thing. Let's stay open for um, uh, different um, uh, ways of thinking, different, uh, different organizations, different markets. And in the meantime, let's bear in mind one thing, that even when delivering a big change in the company, we fail and we do the right kind, uh, kind of fail, it doesn't mean that we stumbled and we shouldn't um, uh, go into the direction of digital transformation. It means basically that once the failure is done in a wise way, it means basically that we learned what not to do and which direction or what, which pivot we should uh, execute. So uh, brace yourself. It's going to be um, lots of information. We've got a little bit more than one hour. So uh, we are starting, guys. And uh, what we are starting, uh, what we are starting with, we are starting with actually with one question. We would like to make sure that um, uh, you are part of this, that we are staying interactive. So, Pavel, let's execute the first poll. Um, uh, we have three questions only, guys, and we would like to understand more how important is digital and team marketing in general in your daily uh, activities. Okay, let me launch the poll. Yeah. I hope you can see it now on the screen. Bernard, can you confirm or any Yes, yes, I can confirm. I see the first. Uh, okay, so first, yes. first reply arrived. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, most of you are going to contribute.
guys, I would say like this, uh, my, uh, looking at those uh, results, I understand that the poll is not that big, but still I'm happy to see that um, uh, we have also people who are at the beginning of the journey because it means basically that what we are doing is even more important to foster the, um, uh, yeah, um, to, uh, to to share uh, not only uh, what should be done, but why we are going into the direction of digital uh, transformation and why digital transformation is also important, not only again for the big players on the market, but for the smaller, even more important. So, okay, um, as we see um, uh, uh, the, the biggest part of you already um, uh, believe that this is important and this is part of your uh, daily work. I'm happy to hear that. Um, again, happy to see that we have got still um, uh, uh, people that are uh, uh, at the beginning of the journey. And um, uh, I, I believe that this is the right direction that what should be done in the companies nowadays. Um, uh, share results, sorry. Uh, how to turn it off, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, please. I will stop it, okay? okay? And then you can continue. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So you can move to next slide. Yeah. So, so guys, uh, why digital transformation? Um, uh, even though it looks like it's obvious, it's that uh, it is uh, not fully understood on many occasions. And since there is no clear understanding, it's not easy to sell this vision to the sea level. Because please bear in mind that at the end of the day, digital transformation means that um, uh, a person or a department or a team responsible for introduction of these um, new technologies, whatever it means, whether it's HR, procurement, marketing, or financial management, means basically that we are entering the areas of our colleagues uh, 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 in the whole company that we are working for. So we need to have possibility, we need to have um, uh, ammunition, basically, um, uh, to show what we are doing, why we are doing this, what is the target, what, uh, and what would, would be the benefit for particular areas. When it comes to the digital transformation, in my opinion, number one is enhancing the customer experience. Because if we are winning the customer, it means that basically we have uh, possibility to earn money, we have possibility to prove that um, uh, what we are doing, that the whole process of digital uh, transformation, the whole process of changing uh, the company pays off. So the first thing basically at first low hanging fruit for us should be always minding the customer and giving the possibility to get more from the market, to outbid the competition with better experience um, uh, and have possibility basically to show to our CFO that should be our ally always and this is something that I'm always preaching in the companies I'm working for, that number one guy for me, no matter what I'm doing, is always the CFO. Because CFO is the guy, if the CFO will understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, then my budget is always growing, that I have possibility to, uh, uh, to perform the change. Next, uh, uh, by customer experience, I mean empowering your employees to generate ideas, to better behave, to better service uh, the customers. It means also value uh, of employees' ideas, fostering the culture where um, failure, intelligent failure, we can talk about this later on, that intelligent failure is more than welcomed. By intelligent, I mean fail fast, fail cheap, move on. If we fail, but we have a bad failure uh, is treated as a test of the new idea and we uh, know what not to do in future. This is big lesson learned for us. Uh, creating breakthrough customer experiences. Nowadays, customers who are entering your website, they are not comparing you to other banks or other uh, microfinance institutions. They are comparing the customer experience to the best online shops, to uh, Amazon. Uh, to eBay, to other uh, places like this. Um, for them, this is the same world. It's like coming from one uh, restaurant to another hotel and to a shop. Everywhere needs to be clean, everywhere where the service needs to be professional, etc. Um, personalized. By personalized, I mean personalized experience for the customers. No one wants to be treated as one of many. Digital transformation and using features or tools like CRM, like marketing automation, 
that doesn't have to be expensive. Even the introduction and the development and the uh, interconnectivity with our systems, with our cell system, for example, it doesn't have to be expensive at all, gives us possibility to treat our customers as a segment of one. So basically to personalize the communication that we are doing, especially if you mind what is being done lately uh, from the perspective of uh, generative uh, artificial intelligence. Use customer journey mapping, basically. So it means that we become to understand not only that um, we possibly enhance customer experience, but we know uh, what it generates. What are what is the impact on uh, conversion rates one after another? Please bear in mind, in mind that I'm thinking about our website uh, as an online shop. This is the right way, and the online shop should be treated not as a place where people just go uh, uh, onto the website, click, uh, apply, and leave. This is the place where we service our customers, where we build loyalty. And this is the place uh, where uh, that we should understand how people are behaving and what kind of features uh, they are using. Next thing about digital transformation, about, uh, it's about efficiency and the cost reduction. Please bear in mind once again, CFO. CFO should be always your friend. So um, before we uh, uh, even start um, uh, uh, running the digital transformation programs, we need to always uh, have the possibility to buy in or to explain what we are doing, why we are do doing this, what kind of results we are expecting, how we will spend money. We need to always talk not only to the C-level from the perspective of CEO, of our boss, uh, whomever uh, would be responsible for digital transformation. And usually I'm always preaching that um, the CEO is the guy that should be responsible not maybe not for the running of the whole process, but at least to supervising this and to be the uh, angel investor, our internal angel investor into this process. Efficiency in, uh, and cost reduction um, can be done on many occasions by what is called robotic process automation. We've been uh, talking about this about a year ago, as far as I believe. Uh, it was uh, uh, one of the stories that we've been um, uh, uh, developing in the uh, uh, MFC here, um, in the uh, uh, bootcamp uh, sessions that we've been doing. And um, what I'm thinking when I'm thinking about um, efficiency cost reduction is employment of bots. It doesn't mean that the people need to be laid off, that we need to make the reduction. Quite opposite. We are giving the tools for people to stop doing the stuff like replying the emails or make, uh, sending back some documents, for example, reminding about some documents that should be signed, etc. We are using um, uh, automated uh, bots again not expensive um, nowadays uh, solutions that helps us uh, to get rid of those um, uh, of the uh, uh, part of the job that can be replaced and we can hand over uh, give back the time for the creative thinking uh, for the business development uh, to our teams generative uh, artificial intelligence uh, i'm not sure how many of you are using already large language uh, 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 model-based tools like ChatGPT, for example. Uh, I discovered this at the beginning of this year and I uh, uh, started doing this, uh, started using this on daily basis. Um, when it comes especially to the uh, marketing um, uh, texts, uh, uh, copy development, um, landing pages building, um, uh, this is something that is uh, used uh, worldwide on daily basis. I'm, I'm uh, always encouraging you guys to uh, check out uh, those tools. Again, they are not expensive. They are at the reach. On many occasions, uh, they are uh, free to use for a certain uh, amount of time. So you can uh, test this by yourself. IVR, uh, uh, this is something that possibly you are already using. Everybody's using IVRs. Um, uh, marketing automation tools. And uh, with marketing automation tools and uh, direct connectivity to the CRMs, 
uh, it gives us possibility uh, to perform what is called hyper personalization. So again, sending customers uh, uh, an information that is personalized, that is well measured, that is connected to the um, uh, systems like uh, even Google Analytics or any other systems that helps us to understand what is the behavior of particular customer, how uh, uh, change in the uh, the way we are talking in the tone of voice or in the uh, uh, unique selling points that we are preaching in our emails, how they are, uh, how our customers are responding, and what are the uh, conversion ratios. Um, uh, next thing I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you uh, about is the data analytics and insights because. Um, whatever you are doing uh, in the world of digital transformation or e-commerce or uh, online marketing gives you two possibilities. Either to fail because you are not measuring what you are doing and it will be discovered by the uh, C-level decision makers, or you are measuring, you understand uh, what decisions are bringing money, what decisions um, uh, uh, are proving that the particular directions should not be taken, at least in the form that we are trying to uh, execute. So basically, um, nowadays, the whole uh, digital world and the whole e-marketing relies on data. It's good and bad because <laughs> it's good that we need to pay attention, that we need to work a little bit more from the perspective of understanding what we are doing. But it's also good from the perspective that once we have a uh, correct uh, a model of A-B testing in place, we can ask for every money the company has from the perspective of uh, the CFO. Because we, it's possible for us to prove that from $1, we are creating $2. Um, guys, how uh, in US, in Western civilization in general, the e-commerce is being done? It's not done on a, base, uh, on a basis that um, people are thinking how much money I can spend this month uh, for marketing um, efforts. If we have a partner that generates partner, I mean, uh, if we have possibility and we proven that uh, in search engine marketing, we are generating from $100, $150 or $200, it means that the job of the CEO is to push to our pockets, so to our budget, as much money as possible for the sake of generation of the, of more money. The question is, whether we can monitor the efforts. And the question is whether we can prove that our actions generate revenue for the company. And this is what data analytics are doing. Um, with data analytics, we better understand our personas. So we know whom to talk to. We understand what kind of, um, uh, what, who is our customer basically. And if we know who is our customer, we understand what kind of communication we can send, what offer to send. So later on, how to boost our conversion ratios. Uh, we can validate the product because if we are making a change in the product, let's say we are preparing special micro uh, uh, lending programs for uh, students who are at the verge of uh, getting from the university to the <laughs> more uh, real world and they would like to start their own business, we also, like, uh, once the new product is on the market, we can validate this before we push too much money. We can uh, detect what kind of changes we need to do, how risk management needs to be revalidated, for example. Um, uh, it is possible with data analytics to map the customer journey. So we know precisely which partner on the internet, whether it's some kind of a portal, whether this is search engine marketing, affiliate network, or our praised agency, digital agency that is helping us to boost sales, uh, online sales. Um, what is the value that is brought by every single source of the customer, so source, source of the traffic? So it's easy for us later on to monitor this, but it's also possible for us to optimize the cost and optimize the budget from the perspective where we should spend our money. Um, predictive analytics gives us possibility to understand what will happen if we do this and that. 
So predictive analytics will give the, the answer basically that if we continue to do this and this, this is where we will land at the end of the quarter or at the end of the year. So again, we better understand whether we are on the good uh, trajectory towards the goals that uh, goals that are expected uh, from us by the C-level uh, administration. Last but not least, ROI-oriented marketing. And this is uh, what I'm doing the last 15 years, guys. I'm not spending money if I didn't test the source of the traffic, that I didn't test what particular partner, affiliate partner, whatever, um, or agency is generating. Once I have the clear understanding, I can set up the KPIs. But all the KPIs are oriented not on the media, not on the even sales, but on financials. If I have ROI positive deal made on the internet, if I have ROI positive campaign, ROI positive source of, of traffic, there is no uh, need to struggle uh, for uh, marketing budget uh, in terms of uh, you know, talking to the CFO. Uh, last but not least, and this is part, uh, again, cornerstone or a stepping stone of the digital transformation is the intelligent failure. We do intelligent failure by uh, uh, setting up the hypothesis, by preparing the KPIs, by showing what is expected, but making sure that if something new is going to happen, we are investing only the amount of money that will help us to understand whether this is the right direction. If it's not the right direction, the cost is minimal. We know that this is a trap. We won't do this. It's good for the company. If it's um, uh, if the test proved that particular, for example, partner generate uh, revenue for us, brings good customers, good leads, good traffic, it means basically that we tested this, that the, there is no failure, that we can pump the money, monitor on daily basis, and uh, uh, generate uh, the revenue. Next thing is um, uh, compliance and security. I'm not going to spend here too much of the time, but we all know that, for example, um, uh, using the blockchain technology, um, we are protecting our documents, uh, uh, exchange of the documentation with the customers, internal documents that gives us possibility basically to better manage the uh, data in the company. Uh, hence, um, it uh, protects us from the possible um, uh, uh, from the uh, from the possible problems uh, from the uh, 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 legislators. Um, uh, uh, digital transformation in uh, the area of compliance and security helps us with the regulatory requirements monitoring. Uh, nowadays, we've got systems that monitor basically what is being produced in terms of the changes in the law and help, um, and this is what lawyers basically are using, and helps us uh, to inform the uh, people from the compliance uh, slash security department to uh, change, for example, procedures. Um, uh, we've got systems for uh, penetration tests, uh, automation, so constantly checking our um, infrastructure, whether there are no bridges, uh, that, uh, that there are no um, uh, problems uh, with the security. Uh, access control, vulnerability detection, and cloud-based wisdom. Nowadays, guys, if you have a system, for example, where you are sharing information with your customers about the, let's say, balance of the loan, what, uh, with the information, basically how much money to which account they should pay off, etc. cetera. Um, and we are offering possibility to log in, et cetera. On many occasions, um, uh, such as systems, they are being attacked by hackers. So what RSA adaptive authentication is doing, for example, um, uh, they are giving possibility to install a piece of software on our systems. It is connected to a cloud-based solution. Once there is anywhere in the world attack from particular, for example, IP address, um, uh, there is a, a, a and someone from this IP address is trying to again attack or login uh, to uh, our uh, internet banking uh, system then such a person is blocked. So there are like lots of means nowadays that can be used from the perspective of automation of uh, helping uh, to maintain the security. Um, uh, next thing uh, is uh, 
and to control the time. The next thing is about uh, agile and scalable uh, operation, guys. And for, from this perspective, I'm thinking about the change control. So possibility to better manage uh, the development of uh, uh, not only the technology, but development of the new features of our products, development of the new ways uh, uh, of the communication, for example, that we are using while talking to our customers. Uh, like um, landing pages, like changes on the websites, uh, in the emails, in the SMSs that we are sending. So, um, uh, mm, uh, but it's also not it's uh, not only about uh, how the ch uh, change control is done from the perspective of the uh, those particular areas, but also uh, it helps us to boost the adaptation basically. To, so to boost the changes. Uh, to boost the uh, introduction of the changes that are needed because our competition, for example, changed something and we are uh, thinking that we are staying uh, behind. Next thing is about validation and learning, which means basically that in the agile world, in the uh, world where we are struggling to uh, scale up our business, uh, we are using, um, if we are not changing anything, we are standing uh, in the same position, competition is uh, developing, we are staying behind. So what we need to do, we need to change something, whether we are entering new markets or whether we are using different ways of communicating with our customers or we are, uh, for example, um, uh, enabling new communication channels like maybe mobile banking. Um, everything is um, uh, may, may be expensive if we are jumping to this particular area without thinking, without testing. Validation and learning means basically that with uh, uh, using agile development means that we are creating first of all MVP, minimum viable product. And this is not only about our internet platform, this is about marketing as well. So we are creating basically testing version of something that we would like to check and we are validating this by gathering enough data and learning whether particular, uh, whether particular, uh, for example, new uh, segment of uh, customers or new market that we are entering, whether it's paying off, whether they are reacting to our brand, whether they are reacting to our um, uh, uh, to our products, whether they are resonating with our mission that we are preaching to them. Cost reduction is natural consequence of agile because basically instead of uh, again, building big products, big uh, introducing big changes, and then thinking, oh, it didn't work out. We need to change something once again. We are doing uh, small baby steps. We are testing what we would like to uh, introduce. And in case there is a failure, again, there is an intelligent failure. There is a low cost behind this. The co normal cost of uh, uh, is reduced. Um, uh, decreased risk, basically dec decreased um, uh, business risk, because even if uh, 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 we would like to uh, introduce any change, any big change, again, first we are testing. If we are testing, then we are reducing the costs and decreasing the risks. It helps us also to think a little bit broader than normally, because um, uh, if we are in the uh, if we are just delivering change after change, and we are continue in continuous uh, uh, change, or we are or we are not doing the change, it means basically that we are staying behind. Um, uh, uh, if we have in place good A/B testing process, good MVP uh, validation process, it means that we can. Uh, test even crazy ideas. Maybe, I don't know, uh, just to give you an example, nowadays, uh, one of the biggest story in foreseeable future will be virtual reality. Um, at the moment, this is 300 euros for a device. Uh, possibly in one year, it will be 100 euros. The question is whether the customers, your customers will start using this as an, uh, in the same form they are using in the iPhones, what uh, Apple is preaching, for example, this with this spatial computing. I'm not sure, but again, um, uh, if uh, we see that, for example, our customers are using some new devices, some new handheld devices, and we would like to, um, to put some money and test this, we can do this. And we can uh, try this innovation and see whether we can service our customers, for example, in virtual reality, 
and possibly make a disruption on the market because competition is not doing this. But again, we are doing this in the form of minimum viable product, MVP, like startups are being done. We are doing this in agile and lean um, way. So we are reducing the costs, we are decreasing the risks, and we are testing fastly. Um, uh, when it comes to the risk management, this is something that um, uh, that is kind of uh, obvious nowadays, especially if you mind uh, all the mathematics uh, behind and all the uh, analytical needs uh, behind the risk management. Um, uh, digital transformation helps us uh, in the uh, identification and uh, assessment of the customers uh, that are applying for the loan, for example. Uh, they, are, they are giving us a better uh, uh, prediction whether particular customers, uh, uh, group of customers, cohort or single customer will pay off the loan and how to, uh, what kind of offer such a person, uh, person um, should get from us. Uh, risk mitigation, risk monitoring, culture training, continuous uh, improvement and documents processing. All those areas nowadays are robotized. And this is one of the biggest story actually in banks, that banks are investing in the robotic process automation, uh, in the risk uh, management, um, uh, in the risk and management areas. Moreover, there are even startups that they are doing only this. They are helping uh, financial institutions, not banks, because banks, they've got their own obligations and they would like to keep the risk um, engine in-house. But um, uh, smaller um, uh, smaller paytechs, they are using um, uh, out-of-the-box uh, risk management um, uh, tools to better manage uh, uh, and mitigate uh, uh, the risks. Guys, um, KYC is streamlined uh, onboarding and KYC. Um, with di digital transformation help us, uh, helps us also in this area, especially from the perspective of customer onboarding, fraud detection like uh, FICO. I'm not sure if you didn't hear about this uh, FICO. Uh, uh, check for this solution from the US and you will find the story that uh, once FICO has been introduced to um, uh, American health system, even though it was a, this is not a cheap solution, this is a multi-million solution, but once it was introduced, it paid off within two or three weeks. I believe that President Obama uh, directly uh, sent the, uh, like the thank you note uh, to uh, FICO uh, management uh, because uh, they managed to cut out uh, frauds uh, in the uh, American health system. This is fully automatized. This is uh, based on the customer behavior. This is based on the uh, lots of different um, uh, 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 analysis, but everything is done in the real time, and everything is done uh, <clears throat> everything is done customer by customer. Um, uh, lead journey and lead uh, nurturing. So understanding again. Uh, what source of traffic, what source of customers, uh, let's say in internet generated, what kind of leads, what happened with those leads, who was responsible for servicing those leads, whether what was the quality of uh, callbacks, for example, on the call center that helps to nurture the leads, uh, where are the uh, bottlenecks in the process of selling of our um, offer again. Um, uh, short story from uh, my experience. Um, one bank that I used to work with, uh, we've been generating a huge number of leads. But at the end of the day, only between three and 7% turned to the, uh, cast, uh, into the customers. Uh, the first thing that I did when I joined the company, I introduced a system, simple system that helped me to understand what is happening with every single lead. Uh, but based on the partner that generated, based on the campaign that was executed, based on the product that was um, uh, promoted. And uh, at the end of the day, I mean, after a week or so, after the analysis, I became to understand uh, that um, uh, one of our key problems were that uh, we've been servicing the leads for loans uh, 
slowly, basically, because we once the lead was in our uh, machinery, once it was sent uh, from the uh, lead capture form, we, we've been waiting between uh, 12 and 24 hours uh, to get back to such a customers. Straight away, uh, we've been losing between 60 and 70% of those customers because once they are not contacted, they went to another bank. So what we did basically, we made a test. Instead of switching everything, all the machinery in the call center, we made a test. I took like three, four people. I uh, built a small team that were that was focused only on those uh, uh, leads, on those uh, loan leads. So the time to lead dropped from 24 hours to one hour and less. Actually, 87% of leads, they've been serviced within uh, within uh, less than half an hour. Guys, what happened? 40%, 40, 40% increase in number of leads that, that were pushed to, through this bottleneck, 40%. Only by uh, understanding the internet customers, they expect better customer experience because again they are not comparing us to other competitors but to the best shops that are servicing them uh, in the fast pace documents processing automated checklists and reporting um next uh, big story uh, from the perspective of financial sector when it comes to the uh, digital transformation is mobile banking and accessibility is possibility to basically to service 24 seven, especially if you use robotic process automation, if you uh, use uh, uh, nowadays chat GPT, you have possibility to service 24 seven. For many customers, uh, one of the most important thing because they've got access to the money. Service democratization and inclusivity from the perspective that again, no matter where they live, whether this is top of the mountain or uh, if there is uh, internet connection, basically they have access to the uh, financial services. Accessible anytime, anywhere, transaction management, uh, alerts and notifications. So again, security and making sure that my money uh, are well preserved or well processed because I'm always informed. Personal finance uh, management and ethical considerations, especially uh, when it comes to the possibility uh, how or to, to uh, when it comes to the um, uh, um, the ways, for example, the banks are working in the Middle East. As you know, uh, they are closed on Fridays because uh, this is the uh, uh, due to the religion. And uh, then with this um, uh, automized processes, you have possibility clearly to manage uh, such uh, uh, customers more easily. Um, when it comes to the competitive advantage that gives the digital transformation, basically, guys, this is understanding how we are spending money, better managing the budgets, better um, and faster decision from the CFO perspective, and ROI-based uh, marketing. Lead nurturing gives us possibility to better uh, process what we already paid for. The leads that we are paying for in the internet in form of a clicks, in form of a banners, of the mailings that we are sending, there is always cost behind this, even if this is SEO, search engine optimiza optimization, because it's not for free, nothing is for free. So, hence, if there is investment, that it means that if we are getting leads from uh, those uh, sources, we need to nurture, uh, uh, nurture them uh, accordingly. Retention campaigns, uh, something that uh, uh, even in Poland and even in many uh, on many occasions, I see that companies, they forget that they've got their own databases and they are always looking for new customers. It's good that companies are looking for new customers, but the first law of marketing, always take care about your customers, always uh, of your customers. So basically, once you have the customers in your database, the retention campaigns, the uh, uh, loyalty building campaigns is the key uh, to the success. Marketing automation, CRM. CRM means that, that basically the relationship is managed and measured, that we understand why we are venting the uh, customers uh, because in CRM, 
we see how we are talking to them, what kind of offers we are sending to them, when we are doing this, so we can validate and calculate whether we are doing this in a uh, good way or wrong way. We can perform the A-B testing, we can understand the cohorts, we can understand what type of customers reacts uh, to what type of uh, communication. Um, digital transformation is also about innovation and product development, guys, and this is um, uh, 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 by uh, the product development, uh, I mean a uh, possibility to create new financial products, but again, with clear understanding whether it's, it pays off uh, or not. Um, digital transformation gives us possibility with right small tools to test before invest, to make these intelligent failures, to reduce the costs and make data-driven decisions, to better um, uh, foster the innovative uh, culture because people are not afraid of testing new ideas because uh, the tests are resolved um, uh, safely with, uh, with the low, uh, low cost. Guys, we've got another poll for you. Um, uh, uh, so Bernard, Bernard uh, before we go to Paul, because I think we are starting a new uh, part of your uh, presentation regarding the trends after this poll. But I was wondering, I mean, uh, you went really quickly through, through this first part, whether anybody, you know, in the audience uh, recognize themselves using any of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, elements, uh, whether it comes to efficiency, cost uh, reduction, using, uh, you know, this artificial intelligence or bots or, you know, any other tools, mechanisms, which you mentioned. It would be interesting to hear, as uh, obviously uh, you have a lot of experience from financial industry. Uh, we believe that most of our, you know, uh, participants are coming from microfinance industry per specifically or social finance industry. And uh, uh, yeah, it would be nice to hear uh, how much uh, uh, experience is already within these uh, mentioned sectors from what you have been uh, mentioning. So feel free, I mean, uh, to, to unmute, uh, I mean, or to raise your hands and uh, we would be happy to hear, uh, you know, from you, uh, how far uh, did you go? utilizing uh, the tools, the mechanisms, the, the processes which have been mentioned. Maybe like CRM or marketing automation, because again, it's all about loyalty and good service for the customers. Maybe someone could share uh, some insights how you are doing this, the CRM, for example. Guys, share more, learn more. In case, I mean, while people are thinking, uh, maybe out of your experience, uh, is there, uh, let's say, uh, anything uh, which you would recommend as, as minimum, uh, you know, and uh, the least uh, cost uh, solutions, which are making a lot of added value? Uh, to your operations Absolutely. and results. Guys, first, first of all, invest into one book, uh, uh, Lean Startup by Eric Ries. This is one of the biggest persona in the uh, startup development, but startup doesn't mean that it's not for you. Startup means that this is about learning how to, in a safe, um, not expensive way, test new ideas. Because as you see, digital transformation affects all of the areas. So it means that basically you are getting with your boots to the life of procurement, HR, and any others. That's why it is so important, instead of preaching how to make the big change, show what are the low-hanging fruits and how to uh, prove that it's worth to pursue, uh, to follow the direction uh, of this uh, digital transformation. The second and the third thing I would say would be investment into, because this is not expensive, expensive at all, in my opinion, this is CRM and marketing automation. 
because this will help us. And we actually, we made a, a huge material with MFC on this. So this is accessible via internet on the website of Microfinance Center. I'm encouraging you to uh, uh, take a look at this information that are uh, that, uh, that you can find there, because this will help you to loyalize your customers. This will help you to build a uh, new uh, traffic of uh, money, basically, and the income from your current database without the necessity to invest into new customers. Of course, there, this investment is always important and needed, but first thing first, always take care about your customers. And the last area, the third area, I would say, take care about your uh, Google Analytics. When you have this well done, reach out for the help from Google. Google helps actually small companies and they provide uh, lectures on this. They provide educational materials that will help you to understand how to incorporate into your uh, website, into your mobile devices, the Google Analytics and better understand the behavior of your customers. So these three areas. Almost no investment, like really single dollars. All right, so no, no comments or questions in the chat. Uh, let's move on. Uh, hopefully, you know, people will take a courage to to give us some challenge or to you especially. So uh, yeah, Go well, you are welcome to, you know, to put uh, any question or comment to the chat. Let's go ahead uh, with the with the poll number two, and you might introduce it. Bernard? Oh, excuse me? Yeah, oh, let's yes, go ahead yes. so, and you, so you we've may... got another. Oh, sorry, guys. We've got another poll. The question uh, for this one is basically what trends are going to affect your business, what you believe. Because we see that um, inflation is like crazy, impacting not only businesses, but our heads as well. Uh, in, uh, social changes, especially user behavior, not only generated by the economics that we that has been put upside down, but only uh, all, uh, as well from the perspective of unsure times we're living in, from the perspective of the wars, from the perspective of the COVID that closed us for three years. Next thing is the technology changes, especially automation, AI introduction, changes in the uh, internet itself and the new channels like VR or Regulatory changes they, they are that we observe, especially on the markets like um, uh, European Union, for example. What do you think? And I just want to uh, remind that this is uh, multi, multiple choice. Also, you might, if you think uh, there are several aspects, which are going to affect your business, uh, you, you may answer all of them. Okay, I think uh, I can try to share results. Mm -hmm. and yeah it would be good if you interpret mm -hmm. guys um, uh, uh, all of them they are overlapping all of them needs to be minded for sure but I agree that um, especially social changes that are uh, induced by economics induced by um, uh, the uh, what is happening with the, uh, the the melting glaciers and everything that we are observing, especially minding the younger generations, the user behavior will heavily impact our business, and the technology is like the uh, uh, nitro in the engine that will boost the pace of those changes. There is a guy that is called, um, uh, his name is Co uh, Raymond Kurzweil. Um, and he uh, made this, um, uh, he developed this law of decelerating returns. The guy was thinking, this one of the most known uh, futurists and um, uh, uh, from uh, US, professor on a couple of universities. And basically, 
he made this um, uh, mind exercise, thinking and asking people basically how they perceive uh, how fast those technological changes are happening. And if you mind that um, uh, uh, there was a time where the uh, waiting for a new technology took uh, hundreds of years, nowadays, if you think about, uh, basically he asked one question, how far do you need to go backwards in time? Take a person from this, um, uh, from those times, move it to the future. So this person will not understand completely what is happening and it won't be possible to adjust. Couple of uh, hundred years ago, it would be hundreds of years. But nowadays it's enough, like, uh, like 15 and 20 years is enough if the person is not uh, too much in the internet technologies, it's enough for such person to get lost in the uh, new world. So yes, we need to mind um, what type of personas, customers uh, we are talking to and adjust what we are doing with automation, with artificial intelligence, with being in these new channels like Web3 is generating, like VR, like AR. It will be a huge story. Um, uh, 20 years ago, no one was thinking that 90% of uh, at least uh, this um, uh, more developed civilization will use smartphones. Nowadays, uh, even in Africa, there are no computers, but there are smartphones. So the access to the internet became something that is like um, common. I agree with you guys, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yes, let's proceed. Okay, guys. So um, uh, what next we would like to do, uh, I would like to address basically the changes uh, that we are observing right now. And from the changes perspective, what, what I mean by changes, I believe, and again, maybe you will disagree, maybe you will give me a hint what other change we should mind uh, uh, for future. But what I'm thinking here, especially for 2023, 24, is the inflation impact uh, on users' uh, behavior increased pressure of the online acquisition, increased uh, cost of customer acquisition that goes minimum 20% year over year uh, is bigger. Margin erosion because of this um, uh, cost, uh, increased uh, uh, competition. Uh, let's think about internet and uh, internet channels. So again, 20% up, more competitors. It means basically that our margins uh, are going uh, worse. Financial KPIs driven marketing. No one wants to do nowadays marketing that is not cal uh, calculated, that uh, we do not have KPIs, that we don't understand how we are spending money. There won't be any jobs for marketeers who don't understand KPIs and um, financial oriented uh, campaign uh, management. AI and automation, 5G. Uh, so uh, again, uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, blockchain, a web three, data driven and personalization. Last but not least, privacy and data protection. Because if money is moving from the real world, um, uh, and we are replacing this with digital money, it means that people who are trying to rob us, they will also migrate to, to uh, those channels. Let's start with uh, inflation impact on uh, user uh, users' behaviors. Basically, what I mean here, I would like to think about um, uh, perspective, business perspective and customer's perspective. From the business perspective, we observe increased costs because again, it's um, the cost of customer acquisition grows rapidly. I will focus here on digital world, on uh, internet, on digital channels, mobile channels. So the cost is increasing like crazy. So the cost of business also are increasing. Uh, pressure, uh, hence this creates uh, pressure on the price of our product and wages pressure because people, uh, they are affected by those uh, prices. So they are asking for money, hence the costs uh, increases even more. And last but not least, it's also the problematic interest rates that sometimes uh, that we've been observing last years that they've been going rapidly upwards a yeah, uh, number of banks they were happy about this but nowadays they are dropping like crazy especially in uh, uh, here in central european which means basically that the models that were prepared by the banks they are no longer valid 
On top of this, we've got competitive dynamics that is growing because companies are moving to the digital area. So in the digital area, we are not finding only with other companies that they are looking how to interact with our customers, but uh, many other businesses they are trying to, uh, uh, to do so. Tax implications and uh, uncertainty uh, that is generated uh, again by the rapid changes that uh, uh, we see throughout the market. From the customer perspective, on the other hand, we've got uh, reduced uh, purchasing power, we've got spending habits uh, change, we've got increased savings, and again, wages uh, in, uh, negotiations. But on top of this, um, uh, people uh, who are um, who've been uh, requesting for money, their investment behavior uh, as well changes. On many occasions, especially when it comes to the, for example, uh, not the microfinance in Poland, but those um, uh, mm, uh, mm, the, 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 the loan institutions, the smaller uh, players, uh, this is like the, uh, for them, this is uh, one of the best timing ever because people who cannot get money from the banks, they are reaching out to them. So the, it's like ripping time uh, for them uh, nowadays. From the MFC perspective, again, the, this behavior may, may impact the decision to invest because no one, uh, because people, they do not uh, know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. Uh, increased short-term uh, debt uh, uh, at our uh, customers' wallets, cost management, in, uh, investment decisions, and uh, again, uh, visitors' um, uh, journey on our uh, uh, website. Everything has changed quite dramatically due to the fact that customers are more picky, that they've got more options in the internet, and they are um, approached by many other uh, businesses, not only financial, in the internet. So it's harder for us to reach out to them in this uh, uh, noisy uh, environment. Um, the next thing it's about uh, marketing and uh, online acquisition, increasing cost. Here, what I mean basically, um, uh, is, uh, that in the uh, microfinance world, we are addressing this uh, uh, basically uh, with um, uh, we see basically that the main uh, challenges uh, are uh, that um, how to say that uh, on many occasions um, uh, what is being offered uh, in, uh, on the market is not done in the right way from the perspective uh, that uh, we offer um, uh, for different customers, for different uh, goals, we are trying to preach the same story. So there is no personalization. It means basically that the uh, conversion rates, they are dropping. We don't understand why if you, we do not have the uh, right um, uh, analytics in place. It means basically that we do not know what time we should uh, contact our customers. Just to give you an example, uh, the conversion rate in the, in the financial world, especially when it comes to the banking business, differs, depends on the uh, time. If we, if I would send a uh, marketing campaign uh, in a form of uh, uh, emails uh, to my customers um, on uh, Monday, uh, and I would talk about credit card, it means that basically, um, possibly, the conversion rate ratios, like open ratios, uh, in fact, they will be quite low uh, due to the fact that I did this on Monday morning when people are coming to work and they uh, just open the mailboxes with the tons of emails from the uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, mortgages, they work differently, for example. Um, uh, people are expecting to get such a, uh, information about such a products during the weekend. Other products during the weekdays. So again, uh, in marketing, analytics means everything because then we can optimize the target and then we have uh, get, uh, that we can uh, get rid of the lack of the transparency. It means basically that we can prove how we are spending money and how we are generating the uh, the revenue. Um, the uh, 
gold mine, this is something that I'm always preaching, is the basically test before invest uh, or A-B testing, but test before invest um, methodology in, uh, in marketing. It means basically that once we have uh, proven uh, partners to work with, once we created some hotspot where we know that these particular partners, they are ROI positive, that they are generating revenue, that we should push the money. And we are building this in a way that at the very beginning, we know nothing. So if we send our message to 10 different partners and they will start doing the campaigns, it means basically that the majority of the money is for testing. But please bear in mind that even once you have a well-managed business and you see that uh, your hotspot is generating money and this is stable business and if you are even meeting your goals always always whenever you are putting the money uh, to the campaigns always uh, leave 10 uh, 15 percent for the testing reasons always start uh, always look for the hotspot because hot, hotspot will erode anyway Competition will try to get to your uh, partners. They will try to get better deals, better offer better money. So there is always struggle to uh, loyalize the hotspot, the partners that are generating for you the revenue, those agencies, those um, affiliate networks, etc. Always look uh, for new partners. Data-driven personalization and privacy, uh, privacy and data protection means basically, um, let's start with customer experience. Um, uh, according to uh, uh, Adobe, one of the biggest companies, 19% um, uh, of uh, in-company marketers see optimizing the customer experience uh, as their biggest opportunity. Because guys, once the money are spent and you've got this initial traffic or the traffic on your website, what you need to do, you cannot screw up the uh, lead nurturing. So it's not only about what is happening on your website, but later on, once the customer is transferred to the uh, call center, for example, or to the salespeople uh, for further processing, you need to measure further the conversion rates on each and every single level 78% of customers are more likely to repeat uh, more likely to be repeat customers uh, if they are receiving the personalized offers this is something that is resolved with CRM and marketing automation again this is not a big effort this is not a big investment but it gives you possibility to boost to boost dramatically how your current uh, customers once, for example, they are uh, paying off the last uh, installment of the uh, loan, how they are reacting to your uh, new offer. Please bear in mind that the competitors will approach them as well. 49 uh, uh, of marketeers uh, who took part in this Adobe survey, um, they were uh, excited about creating high quality personal experience for their customers. So basically, uh, marketeers they understand that they need to be creative this is one thing but that this creativity needs to be calculated and evaluated so there, there needs to be uh, analysis uh, behind this uh, in fact guys please bear in mind that customer experience is all about reaching out to uh, in, uh, customers in a personalized way and it boosts dramatically the sales conversion dramatically the purchases on your website when it comes to the AI and automation, something that is very loudly discussed nowadays from the beginning of this year, a uh, number of tools uh, uh, went into thousands, if not hundreds of, uh, if not tens of thousands already uh, done uh, or developed based on the large language uh, models like chat GPT. Um, when it comes to the robotic process automation, it helps us with the scoring and sales process automation, but it also helps us to personalize the offers and uh, service via bots. So customers are, are in the long run, they are self-serviced in 24-7 uh, uh, mode. Also, um, uh, uh, it gives us scalability 
constant support and cost efficiency from the perspective no sales i'm sorry for the typo uh, and extended sales please bear in mind that all the materials uh, that i'm uh, showing you right now about robotic process automation about crm they are available for you on the micro uh, uh, finance center websites they are still there we've been talking about this uh, during last um, uh, boot camps uh, sessions uh, there are much much broader data uh, on each and every subject that we are touching uh, today today basically we are getting back to the general um, trends uh, uh, we are uh, showing what is the true north but how to get there um, it was explained possibly we will keep on explaining this because this world of digital transformation accessible tools and tactics is uh, changing uh, quite rapidly um, robotic process automation increases speed, agility, and uh, flexibility of our businesses, but also drives uh, operational performance uh, from the perspective uh, of the operational costs. It, it brings it down, basically, improves efficiency and uh, increases output and with higher quality and better productivity when it comes to what our uh, employees are doing. But last but not least, improve the staff and the customer uh, behavior because it impacts heavily how fast customers are serviced, how optimized is the uh, tone of voice and the information, how personalized it is for each and every single customer. And on the other hand, it lets the customers rather to plan what the machinery will do instead of writing the uh, emails. Marketing automation, on average, uh, uh, mm, mm, nowadays, this is like something that is commonly used by most of the companies. In the more Western civilization, like um, US, Germany, or uh, France, uh, uh, those numbers that I'm showing you here, they are like the lowest ones. Um, businesses uh, that uh, implemented marketing automation, they uh, have tremendous, really tremendous increase in qualified leads. Because again, they can reach to a customer fast, they can reach with the uh, right uh, communication, with the right tone of voice, and it can be measured so it can be changed and optimized uh, when necessary. Guys, 63% of participants uh, of a survey uh, developed by Invest uh, CRO uh, they are planning to increase marketing automation budget because again then your staff they are not to be fired they are to be uh, given a tool that will help them to process the customers faster and to uh, enrich uh, the communication uh, with a, a better understood and measured uh, product uh, proposition mm. 91% of marketeers, guys, uh, uh, they uh, explained, they confirmed that the marketing automation is important. And this is uh, basically the cornerstone when it comes to the success of the campaigns. And it is like this. Uh, nowadays, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't do a campaign where I cannot react to a customers that are getting back from this campaign uh, in real time, basically. 61% of surveys uh, of marketeers, they are reporting increase of lead generation. Uh, uh, because again, if a customer has, even if uh, the customer is not ready um, uh, to fulfill the lead, but is leaving, for example, just uh, his uh, email address to get more information, we can respond quickly and we can send again call to action. So the customer will get back to us and provide more data so we can process uh, on board uh, such a customer. Guys, the uh, key thing is the data integration, is to uh, have in one place a comprehensive deck that explains what is being done, why it's being done, what were the results. This will show you what kind of skills you need uh, to build uh, in your team. And this will um, uh, help you uh, in future to better develop the uh, automation uh, processes.
these are no longer like the secret knowledge. Uh, the, there, is, there are lots of materials uh, that helps you to better understand both RPI, marketing automation. Again, I'm encouraging you to check the materials on the website of Microfinance Center. And if you have any questions later on, reach out. In microfinance, uh, automation means that basically we are optimizing the marketing operations, especially the repetitive and tedious uh, tasks can be performed uh, by uh, applications. Um, next thing is the customer engagement. So uh, we have increased uh, customer experience. We have better targeting and more relevant offers. Hence, from the very beginning, we are making sure that our uh, conversion funnel is getting broader and uh, uh, broader. AI-powered uh, customer experience. Again, nowadays, um, uh, for example, landing pages, they are created by the machinery and they are dedicated uh, for particular phrase, particular type of customers. Um, this is new to market. This is not something that is commonly used, but please uh, watch out because in foreseeable future, like uh, maximum one year, there will be tons of tools that helps you to optimize uh, the uh, landing pages, the application forms in real time uh, for particular persona. And surely the uh, communication uh, optimization, not only from the perspective of services, uh, of servicing uh, the questions, etc., but especially from the perspective of A-B testing, um, our user interface, our products, uh, and also our uh, pricing and channel matrix. Guys, next thing is 5G that um, uh, and all those new technologies that I uh, wanted to talk to you about a little. This is something that uh, may seem uh, not that much uh, uh, for you, but I believe it is because 5G, blockchain, Web3 means accessibility, means remote banking, means basically uh, democratization of the access to the uh, banking services. And um, uh, the same will happen here, what happened with the uh, smartphones uh, in uh, undeveloped countries, for example, where maybe there are no uh, nice computers, nice laptops, but uh, iPhones are there and 5G will boost the presence of such uh, handheld devices, not only um, telephones. Blockchain, will enable possibility to remotely um, uh, perform KYC, to better interact from with the customers uh, um, from the perspective of exchanging the documentation, signing the agreements. And Web3 will help you to service the customers, for, uh, for example, in this new uh, virtual or augmented uh, reality worlds that is getting, again, nowadays this is expensive. Um, not more expensive than a good uh, smartphone. And I'm not talking about flagship iPhone, but still, uh, it is still kind of expensive, but you can expect that uh, in foreseeable future, maximum two, three years, I uh, will observe a uh, huge uh, uh, revolution from the perspective how we are entering the internet. The companies that will know how to react fast to this, they will win uh, those customers. Um, 5G Web3 on microfinance means that basically from the perspective of 5G, this is increased mobility, internet of things, enhanced uh, customer experience, data security, and CRM data that can be gathered about the customers, about the geolocalization, about uh, how people are using particular um, uh, devices and um, how we can interact with them. When it comes to the uh, Web3, uh, uh, this is more complex, this is maybe not for now, but still this is about uh, having possibility to exchange the values with uh, blockchain-based uh, currencies. Uh, this is about uh, identity verification, this is about the uh, uh, tokenization and transparency of the movement of goods, transparency uh, in terms of movement of documents and movement uh, of uh, value, has, hence money. Um, VR AR will, uh, is bringing totally new enhanced uh, customer experience, customer care where we can talk uh, in a nice office, even though we are at home with our um, representative uh, in uh, 
microfinance office, for example, remote one, digital one. Hardware prices are decreasing and we can uh, observe uh, more and more investment in the augmented reality and special computing, especially uh, if you mind what Apple is doing, what uh, HTC is doing and uh, Samsung what is doing. Guys, what is uh, last but not least, it's uh, all about um, uh, understanding um, uh, not only the customer, but how to introduce this uh, in our um, company. It's about, um, oh, uh, 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 sorry for the uh, subject, it should be a CEO in microfinance, not the uh, marketing automation, my mistake. Um, guys, um, uh, first thing that we need to do, if you would like to pursue this uh, um, uh, this big change or begin this journey towards uh, 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 digital transformation is to pitch the case basically uh, uh, to our uh, C-level uh, and ensure that what we are uh, preaching is focused not on uh, uh, general statistics, not, so, not on just a general um, uh, ideas, but we are thinking about KPIs, about testing before investing, about possibility to measure the results. Um, next thing, it's about uh, ensuring the safety. So ensuring uh, that uh, the reporting process is in place, that the uh, decision makers, they are informed and they can uh, hit the brakes if necessary, but they won't because they will be uh, briefed uh, accordingly. Build fail safe. So set up and proof A-B testing methods and processes. So again, we are showing that um, uh, uh, that we have that we are thinking how we are spending money on what we are spending money, and we are thinking basically um, as the CFO uh, of the company that uh, we are protecting the company from overspending. Yet we are giving possibility to better understand what competition is doing in this world and um, whether we can leverage uh, digital uh, transformation, digital changes for the sake of our profit and loss or budgets. Um, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, always agree on KPIs. Always agree how data is being built up and um, always include uh, the key decision uh, makers into the uh, KPIs setup so they can also monitor the results, they can feel safe. Uh, this is how they will uh, give you the access to the budget. One more poll for us, uh, for you guys, sorry. Uh, what digital areas you would like to get to know more about in future, in future sessions like this? Because again, today it's two hours. It's very short because previously uh, for every each and uh, area that we've been uh, showing today, uh, we've been uh, preparing separate um, uh, workshop. Um, so basically knowing what you know right now, having your uh, thoughts and um, thinking about how what the future will bring for you, what you already observed, uh, what more would you like to get to know during uh, for, uh, upcoming sessions? Pavel, could you run the survey? All right, let me... Launch it. It should be on your screen. Yep. And again, it's a multiple choice, just in case you would like uh, to follow up on more topics, then you are allowed to click uh, several topics. Okay, Bernard, I think... Uh, hey guys, I'm happy to see that you are um, uh, focused on... Oh. Ah, not, okay, but <laughs> on the merchandising and e-marketing campaigns, yes, because um, this is like this should be treated like low-hanging fruit, especially when it comes to your own database. So, these uh, first two points, like um, CRM, marketing automation, and 
uh, e-marketing campaigns means that you are focused on generation of the value, the money for the company. This is what will be most important for your decision makers. Once they will see that you are proposing getting more money for the money that they are spending, they will be more than happy to give you money if you will put in place fire sale, if you will put in place analytics, and if they will be uh, there will be possibility for them to monitor uh, the progress. So again, I believe, yes, that we need to mind the trends, the disruptive technologies that are uh, visible on the market, because this is like ticking bomb. Um, uh, this is what happened, for example, with banks that forgot uh, in 2007 and 8, uh, they didn't believe that um, uh, smartphones, they will be a huge story. They uh, lost their position due to the fact that uh, the accessibility was the king for the uh, uh, for the uh, for their um, uh, um, customers um, here, um, I would say like this. Always stay focused on the generation of the value. Always try to identify low-hanging fruit because with low-hanging fruit, with this first change that you will show that generated extra couple of bucks, uh, people will start thinking that uh, it's worthwhile to investigate, worthwhile to put more money into the testing of the new features, uh, A-B testing of the new ways you are communicating to the cost, uh, customers. So again, I'm happy to see this. Thank you for your answers. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, I think uh, this was this was the last slide. Yes, guys. So again, I'm encouraging you first of all to go to the website of Microfinance. You will find lots of materials there, including the materials that we've been preparing together with the team. Uh, uh, for the sake of the uh, this digital bootcamp that we've been doing during last years, you will find lots of uh, information how to start building the digital process, the digital department from the beginning, what kind of skill set you uh, should have in your team, what kind of tools you should be using, and how to calculate it, uh, how to calculate everything, how to manage the relationship not only with customers but with your C level decision makers, uh, makers as well. And last but not least, you've got my data here. So uh, please uh, um, contact me, uh, reach out via LinkedIn. And if you will have uh, more questions, uh, I'm always open to help. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bernard. Uh, Any questions? Well, yeah, yeah, I would like uh, to, to give the opportunity to the uh, participants of this webinar if they have any questions, uh, if if they need any explanation, because uh, yeah, you went through a lot of technical information and terms. So yeah. feel free, you know, don't be shy, uh, uh, especially if you are new to this uh, environment, to these areas. Uh, feel free to to ask uh, your questions, uh, either to write them uh, to the chat or uh, raise your hand and uh, we will unmute you to speak up and ask the question. Okay. Hello, how are you? Uh, thank you for your presentation, Bernard. Uh, it's not uh, the first time that uh, I hear your presentation. It's, I congratulate you uh, for the uh, um, technical and uh, the subtlety of uh, marketing. Uh, I am Mervis, a uh, marketer responsible, marketer manager from FedInvest. I don't know if you know FedInvest. It's a microfinance in Albania. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, actually, I was uh, in 2019. We have 2019 and 2020. Uh, we have the digital bootcamp, and yeah. uh, I see uh, that uh, uh, there are a lot of stuffs. Uh, and a lot of uh, knowledge to assimilate in the marketing. Now marketing, it's uh, even uh, for the microfinance, uh, it become uh, really uh, important and uh, uh, even in budget that you said that uh, it, because before was more face to face. We have 65 branches, even in a rural area, we uh, didn't go with uh, technology because they don't, uh, they, they prefer the old school, let's say, but uh, right now after the pandemic, we uh, get uh, more uh, 
evaluation uh, for to go uh, to bring the marketing uh, online auto automate but okay uh, your presentation it was very uh, say it's um, very complex we don't do too much things but uh, we actually in three years we make a lot of changes I think yeah I'm happy to hear that, guys. And um, the best way to perform the change, I, I have one question to you, basically. What was the biggest game changer? When? What, what was the, the time that um, people in the company began to understand that the old school is good, that direct communication with customers is good, but this digital, whatever you are doing, can bring extra revenue as well. What was the game changer? What was the first time that you seen that, ah, yeah, so now you see that it, it is worth investing into? Uh, speaking for uh, Fed Invest, it was when we um, um, apply for the first time the uh, loan uh, online application. Uh, yeah. And we make the, uh, let's, say, let's say that we have the digital branch, one digital branch and 65 physical branch. We have data, we have a lot of data from uh, the website, from the social media, from the email, not email, so we don't have to mention, but we have a lot of leads, a lot of application, a lot of, and uh, let's say they understand with data that uh, 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 digital marketing, it's, uh, uh, it's not only uh, awareness, uh, but we can sell online and yeah. it's tangible. Okay, it's a problem with uh, portfolio risk. We don't how to manage it because uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, challenging, but uh, for sale now it's not awareness; it's selling. It's it's, yeah. it's changed. Yeah, yeah. People for too many times they think about marketing like this is a tube where you uh, preach to the customers and like a rather one-way communication. Marketing nowadays, and actually this is something that I'm preaching, guys that if you mind um, uh, digital marketing, it's not marketing. This is sales channel. Lead generation, it's not marketing. This is beginning of the leads channel. So the marriage between marketing and the sales team is so important because otherwise, and I observed this even in a big organizations that they thought that they are doing with a lot of money spent in internet, Marketing was responsible for responsible for generating leads, no matter quality, because the, this was not their KPI. They've been generating number of leads as cheap as possible. They were pushing this to the sales, and then sales try to sell something. But those leads were too uh, low quality, and at the end of the day, everybody thought that uh, e-marketing is not working. It wasn't working because there was no feedback from sales to marketing. What is the reason of uh, dropout of lead after lead after lead? Once we introduce this, for example, in a banking sector, in one of the banks, once we uh, introduce this uh, uh, reporting back from sales to marketing, then marketing became to understand um, which partners are generating good value leads and which are generating low value leads. And then they started to optimize. And this is when everything started to happen in green. So, but once again, um, Ervis, thank you very much for your feedback. Okay, thank you for your presentation. And yeah, thank if we can ask one more question. Go uh, if it's possible to send us by email uh, or uh, the presentation, we can recheck it uh, the, or uh, yes, possible, yes, yeah. yes. The presentation is going to be shared with all the participants okay. of the webinar. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ervis, uh, for your contribution. Uh, and uh, all right, anybody else? Any question or uh, comment? Bernard, maybe uh, you know one more question from me. I mean. Go ahead. Uh, what are the major, what do you think are the major challenges or bottlenecks huh, when it comes uh, to implementation or application, these uh, digital tools, technologies, mechanisms, as you say, uh, merger of marketing and sales? Well, thank you for this question. Um, and the answer will be maybe something that uh, you guys did not expect, because I would say, and with the 
uh, uh, I had lots of thoughts um, about this, would be a mindset of the marketing leader. Let me explain what I think. Uh, when I was working in Barcelona, I was working in a true e-commerce company where I observed amazing tools when it comes to the real-time measuring of the ROI for each and every single traffic source, really in the real time. Uh, I came back with this idea to Bank HSBC and I built a tool like this, uh, first tool for online real-time monitoring of the spendings in internet um for uh based on each partner on each banner on each uh, text message whatever we've been doing everything was measured in real time i created this tool later on when uh, hsbc decided to withdraw from the market they left this tool for me we and um uh, and for the company who was uh, coding this for me this uh, this tool Right now it's being used in two or three, um, maybe four big companies. But what was a huge surprise for me, and I thought that it will be like the general, uh, generally accepted on the market too, because the company that was uh, coding this for me, uh, we basically um, uh, get into the uh, idea that we will start selling this on the market. And I can tell you that whenever a salesperson was coming to a marketing team and was showing this uh, tool as the tool that shows what is the efficiency of the actions behind every single campaign. Such a person was maybe not kicked out from uh, the room, but no one wanted to be transparent. Um, I'm not sure about your countries, guys, but marketing budgets, it's so nice to have a good budget. You can spend on so many things. Um, the, all those agencies, they are like so uh, praising us. They are uh, inviting us, etc. because we are big spenders. But at the end of the day, um, we don't need to show to the sea level basically what was the efficiency uh, source by source by source by source. We are just showing that, yes, we are well spending budgets. We are showing the nice presentations, what kind of branding campaigns we are doing, what kind of lead generation campaigns we are doing. But no one wanted to be transparent, even though transparency means that, yes, this is a headache to choose the right partners. You need to be very aware of the quality of the partnerships that you are doing. But, but once this is done, I mean, just a sec. Mm -hmm. Once, guys, we have in place this, and we know whom we are uh, working with, and we've got this hotspot, these partners that are generating revenue, we can go to CFO and we are asked for every money, and the budget is skyrocketing. But 95% um, of the marketeers, they are... Uh, uh, they they uh, they didn't want to be that transparent and pay too much of the attention on this. It is nicer, easier to just spend money on a big KPIs like number of leads and from the campaign and that's it. Instead of uh, instead of proving that this is ROI positive deal. Nowadays, even IT departments they are looking for possibility to prove that what they are coding and doing it, it is ROI positive for the company. So marketing needs to do this. But still, I believe that the mindset is the biggest challenge. Understanding that it's worth to be transparent, that it's worth to pay attention, that it's worth to become a partner for the C level, especially for the CFO. Yeah, it's, I, I appreciate the analogy with the code with uh, the IT guys that they don't explain everything inside because it's very complex and uh, yeah. the C suite they want uh, just. Uh, uh, but they are so expensive that board. they became to understood that it's worth to show what is the value for the company. <laughs> Otherwise, ah, uh, not good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Good to yeah. know. Thank, thank you, thank you, Bernard. Uh, and I also understand that the number of uh, the in, yeah um, of the information which you mentioned is is a little bit high level or complex, you know, uh, when we consider microfinance or social finance sectors. But I mean, uh, again, 
exploring your experience uh, you know what what do you think uh, it's going to to hit the even the microfinance sector or social finance uh, sectors mm -hmm. from uh, from all those uh, you know tools processes okay. which you I mentioned say, what what, what the microfinance sector should be ready for yeah. uh, you know to consider yes guys automation if if you rely on digital marketing so you rely mostly on search engine marketing on positioning, uh, on having possibility to gather the customers, uh, new customers and uh, employ something that will help you to lo loyalize your customers. It's going to be automation tools connected to CRM, connected to uh, marketing automation and connected to your website that will help you to optimize the uh, uh, landing pages at the, I'm not talking about the whole websites because it's we should talk about the subject as well, but optimizing the landing pages for the sake of the search engine marketing and for the sake of the coherent communication between the banner or whatever we are selling or email even that we uh, are uh, sending to a customer and communication on the landing page. Because please bear in mind, guys, that the conversion funnel relies on how much the customer is engaged. Customer is engaged if the, if the story that we are uh, uh, selling is uh, um, coherent. By story, I mean, if we are showing a banner, on this banner, there is a, I don't know, a, a, a agricultural machinery or something like this, and there is a loan for this, and this banner has its colors and its um, call to actions we need to make sure that the same story is sold on our website, that we are not redirecting customer to a general website with a button click to apply. No, we are losing, we are venting customers like this. We need to make sure that, that, that this is personalized. So automation that is connected to CRM, to marketing automation and to website. And uh, it is all this ecosystem is employed for the sake of uh, optimized, personalized communication. So I would start with basically with making sure that we've got our CRM, our um, marketing automation in place. So we took care about our website, uh, sorry, our, um, uh, our databases. And uh, once the new customer is there, that we have a proper tool for defining the persona, putting this in the right uh, place in our CRM. So later on, the communication that is sent is adjusted to this persona. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And now, indeed, I think, uh, you know, uh, we are living in an era when uh, fintechs are catching up uh, and uh, approaching the clients of traditional microfinance institutions now. So I think it's a uh, real proof that uh, traditional organizations offering uh, microfinance needs to also catch up with these digital tools, digital sales. Yes. If... I, I fully agree. Money are moving to digital. Um, if you go to a restaurant, almost, almost no one is paying with real money because of the COVID, bacteria, whatever. So everybody's using digital means of uh, payment or most of the customers, it means basically that they are adjusting their behavior. They will use more and more um, uh, devices uh, to uh, to take care about the money, so to apply for the loans as well. Digital way is the only way that, uh, um, the only, is uh, one of the key uh, channels uh, uh, to uh, work with our customers. And please bear in mind that also, it is more expensive to get uh, the customers from our competitor than to reach out for the new one that doesn't have the, uh, didn't get the offer yet. So if we mind, for example, um, students that are leaving the universities and would like to start their own business and maybe they will have to reach out for the microfinancing, it means basically that these are um, tech savvy, uh, tech -savvy uh, customers we need to give them possibility to be served in the environment that they like, that they uh, got used to. They won't come to the uh, branch. They will do everything remotely. Give them possibility to be uh, uh, treated remotely, but with respect 
and with the uh, optimized and personalized uh, service. Okay, thank you, Bernard. So uh, I don't see any questions, comments in the chat. Uh, maybe last chance uh, uh, for the question from participants uh, as we are coming to the end. Please uh, let us know if you have last minute question. If not, uh, you are always welcome to approach us, approach Bernard, uh, as all his personal information will be also shared through the presentation. No, no, not more comment, not more questions. So I would like to thank you, all of you who participated uh, at this webinar, and it would be really appreciated uh, after you leave the webinar if you could fill in the survey which will pop up on your screen. It really takes only very short time from you and it would be very valuable to us. So thank you very much for, you very for much. your participation. Thank you, Bernard, uh, for your interesting and valuable information and uh, hope uh, to see you in one of the next sessions, next webinars. Absolutely. Have a good rest thank of the day. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.